How to mold a simple object using silicone and reproduce that object using casting resin. In this tutorial we're going to cover the basic use of our molding and casting kit. This is a very simple kit consisting of a pourable soft silicone and of course a hard casting resin. So follow along as we cover some of the basics of making a simple block mold using 5110 silicone and of course the TC800 casting resin to produce a hard plastic cast and of course a reusable silicone mold that can be used for creating multiple copies of your original. Now for this video I chose this little gnome that I picked up at a hobby store and one of the reasons I chose this little guy is to explain how you deal with certain things like this upraised hand, his waving hand with his thumb out. And when you're molding something like this, you want to think of this upside down first, because when you're casting this, obviously you'll be pouring in through his feet later on. So we want to make sure we understand any problem areas that might trap air. And the best way to do that is to flip your object upside down and study it and see if there's any place that might trap air once you pour a liquid into that mold. Now since his arm and his thumb are going to be pointing down in the casting process, that means those will naturally fill up when the mold is full. So this will not require any kind of special vent or anything like that. But these are all considerations you want to make before you start making your mold. And those of you new to this process, I highly recommend visiting our video library on our website because that has a lot more information about poured block molds and venting and that sort of thing. But on with our little gnome here. So first thing we want to do is make sure he's secured to a board. Now this little kit comes with a piece of foam core board and we're going to position this tube, also included in the kit, in a way that we can cut it down one side because he will require a seam to remove him from that finished block mold. Now the hot glue gun, not included in the kit, this is a special U-line hot glue gun, a professional quality hot glue gun, and I highly recommend if you're doing any amount of this on a regular basis, get yourself a good quality hot glue gun. Now in addition to sealing that tube with hot glue, you can also use some of the included Protolina soft clay. That can be used to seal up other areas of a mold box or do any corrective work. You can also use that to create an original sculpture if that's uh, what you're inclined to mold. Now I like to use a marker, not included, to mark the baseboard with notes about how the mold will be opened. So you'll notice I've marked the front and where I'm going to put the seam, where it's going to be cut. And it's important to have those instructions written there because when you pour this later on, you may not be able to see your part inside the mold, so it's real important to remember where you're going to make your cut so you don't accidentally cut into the face of the piece. Now we're going to release the part with ZIP 301 non-silicone mold release. That is real important that we use a silicone free mold release. Since we're making the mold with silicone, we don't want to have anything that will cause it to bond. And pure silicone oil in the mold release will do just that. So make sure that you spray that with non-silicone mold release, like the ZIP 301 that of course comes in the kit. And make sure you give that plenty of time to outgas after you've sprayed mold release on your part. If you pour your silicone too soon before the mold release has had a chance to off-gas, you'll wind up little pinhole bubbles all over your part. Now we're ready to calculate the volume of our mold tube. Now this tube comes with the kit. And if you were to use the kit and fill it all the way up, it would take about every drop of silicone provided in the kit, which is about two pounds. But since we're not using all that, we're going to calculate the volume in cubic inches. And this is a really important volume formula. Of course, you can always do the rectangular formula if you're using a rectangular mold box. That's pretty simple, length times width times height. But for a cylinder, it gets a little bit more complicated. And cylinder volume formula is volume is equal to radius squared times pi, or 3.14, times height. So again, that's the radius squared. So in this case, this is a 3-inch mold tube. So that would be 1.5 inches squared times 3.14 times the height. So to plug in all of our numbers to this formula, we have 1.5 squared times 3.14, of course, which is pi, times 3.5, which is the height. And that's about a half inch over the top of our figurine. 
So real important, you don't want to measure right up to the figurine's top. You want to go a little bit over, at least a half inch or more. And that just ensures that we have a mold that will close and seal well later on. And that gives us a volume of 24.73 cubic inches. Now the 5110 silicone that we're using is about 25 cubic inches per pound. So that means we're going to need to mix up right around a pound of the 5110 silicone in order to create this mold. Now let's go over the properties of 5110 platinum silicone. Now real important, this is a platinum silicone. That means we need to be careful about contaminants. The clay that comes in this kit and all the items provided are all sulfur free. So we don't have to worry about that. But when in doubt and whenever you're molding something that you don't know its exact composition, always a good idea to run a small test to make sure that everything is compatible because this is chemistry and you can contaminate a silicone if you're mixing the wrong materials into the silicone or if you're pouring it over a surface that is not compatible. Now this kit comes with two different silicone options. The 5110, which is a soft Shore A10, or 5130, which is a Shore A30. We're gonna focus on the 10 Shore A, which is the softer of the two. This is soft like human skin. And of course, a one-to-one -one mix ratio, a low viscosity of 2,500 centipoise, a 30 minute working time, and about a three to four hour demold. And real important, that's all at room temperature. So you always wanna be working with silicone in a, an environment Environment that's around 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Now 5110 can be mixed by either weight or volume, but I always prefer to use the weight ratio. That's always going to be more accurate, especially when you're working in small batches. You'll see this in a lot of our tutorials. I really recommend when you're working in small amounts, especially to use a gram scale. And that of course eliminates a lot of waste, but also makes sure you're working with a lot higher level of precision. And you'll also notice that we're mixing in one cup. So using one mixing cup like this, again, reduces waste. And it also makes cleanup a lot easier because if we dispense this into two separate containers, then we have more cleanup involved. And over time, as you get more familiar with the materials, it's a lot easier to do this and do this without the fear of being off ratio. Now, when you're mixing up the two components, here again, we've mixed up, uh, even though this took right at about a pound, I measured a little bit more than a pound out, uh, about 230 grams of A and 230 grams of B, so I'd have a little bit extra to work with. And that's always a good idea, just because when you're mixing this up, it's inevitable that you're not going to be able to get everything, every drop out of silicone out of that mixing cup. Now, proper mixing is crucial to everything working right. This goes for both the silicone as well as the resin portion of this. So make sure that you take care to scrape the sides and the bottom of the mixing cup. And that's one of the reasons we provide these straight edge uh, stir sticks. And you don't want to mix with a spoon or a plastic knife. That curved edge will not incorporate all of the material, especially down around the bottom of the bucket. So make sure you take time to scrape the sides and the bottom of the mixing cup and get everything worked into the mixture. With a 30 minute working time, there's no excuse for poor mixing. Now ready to pour our silicone. And you'll notice I'm pouring this a little bit off the side of our pattern. And that's important. We don't want to pour it directly over the pattern and create turbulence that could create bubbles. Now in a perfect world, we always recommend vacuum degassing, but I wanted to show how this kit can be used without vacuum degassing. This silicone is low enough in viscosity that uh, those of you who don't have a vacuum chamber can use this without vacuum degassing. You will have some little micro bubbles in the silicone, but if you pour carefully, you'll wind up with no bubbles up against your master. Now, once we're done with our pour, you don't have to worry about cleaning out your mixing cup because once that cures, you'll be able to peel that all out of the mixing cup and use it again. So I'm just going to take my stir stick and put that in there and use that to check the silicone later on and make sure everything's cured. That's always a good idea to save whatever is in that mixing cup because that will tell you what's happening inside your mold container. Now, after about four hours, we're ready to demold. And you'll see when I can easily peel this out of the mixing cup, that's a good indicator. Everything has cured completely. So again, great way to check your work. And if everything is cured there, then you're good to go opening your mold. And 
this is where those notes come into play. You want to be very careful to keep track of the orientation of that original piece and how that seam needs to be cut open if you're dealing with a part that requires a seam. This goes for both the soft silicone we're using here as well as the 5130. You want to make sure you keep track of that so that you cut this mold open in a way that will create a functioning mold. Because again, this little dwarf here, if we're wrong in where we put our seam, if we put it right down his face, we're going to wind up with an ugly seam that has to be trimmed off of every casting. Now what I'm doing is creating a little zigzag cut, uh, more of an S shape than a true zigzag. We don't want any hard edges that uh, could create a tear later on. So I'm creating that kind of S shaped cut down the side and then carefully trimming that out. Now this can be done with an X-Acto knife or a scalpel like I'm using here. We don't include that in the kit, but any kind of really sharp knife is ideal for cutting this out. And there we have our original master. And if we had done this with clay, we might have to do a little bit of cleanup to get uh, any of the clay residue out. But overall, this should release fine from most objects that, again, provided they're contaminant-free, like this little vinyl sculpture. And I made a little additional cut there around his arm to make sure it wouldn't have any drag on the mold coming out. And now we have our original removed, and we're ready for casting. Now the 5110 silicone is soft and ideal for creating a mold like this that's hinged and that minimizes a seam on the other side and keeps everything nice and tidy. And this soft silicone is ideal for casting little delicate resin parts like this or soap or wax patterns for candles and that sort of thing. And now ready to cast our casting resin. We're going to be using the TC800, and again, we're going to be mixing that up using one of the provided little popsicle sticks for stirring. Now, TC800 casting resin. This is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume. Now, I'm going to show the weight ratio here in a minute, and that's different. Unlike the silicone, this has a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume, but a 100 to 88 mix ratio by weight. And we'll get into that here in a minute. But this has a two minute working time, about a 20 minute demold, and it's a hard impact resistant 75D. Now, just like with the silicone, remember we are doing chemistry here, so you want to be as accurate as possible. And remember, when you're working in small batches, you want to be extra precise so that you don't get off ratio. So it's one to one by volume or 100A to 88B by weight. And I throw that in there for those of you working in very small critical batch sizes, because if you are off ratio, especially with too much B, you can wind up with a part that is impossible to paint. So take care to mix precisely as possible. And always use clean stir sticks and mixing containers. This is uh, one of the provided graduated containers, and we're mixing up a four ounce batch. Now this is where it's important to remember how your part is configured in the mold. We want to remember that little outstretched hand because that's an area that will be prone to trapping air bubbles if we're not careful. Now one of the benefits to using this soft 5110 silicone is it's soft and squishy enough that we can use that to our advantage when we're casting. We can squeeze that. You notice I filled it up about halfway and I'm squeezing his little outstretched hand to make sure that that sucks that resin down into his hand. You can also pour it back out and then pour it back in again. And that's also a good way to eliminate surface bubbles on the inside of the cast. Another little trick is to warm up the mold. Warm molds work better than cold molds. Uh, heat lowers viscosity and that just helps the resin flow that much better. Just low heat of around 95 to 100 degrees will greatly improve the uh, quality of a cast. Also, dusting the inside of a mold with baby powder will also improve the paintability of the finished cast. Now, once we're done squeezing out any potential air bubbles, ready to top that off and let that set. Now, unlike an air drying material, polyurethane resin sets up from the thickest mass and radiates out. So you'll see here in a minute there where his little feet are uh, at the top of the mold. Those are going to set first. The thickest mass will cure first and radiate out. So it's really important to remember that his little gnome feet that we can see sticking up right there, those are going to cure first. You can see those starting to turn white. 
and his little gnome hand that's outstretched will be the last part to cure. And a way we can gauge that without opening the mold prematurely is we can check that little drip you see at the top. So when that little drip area has turned opaque white, that's a good indicator that we're ready to remove our part. But really important, we don't want to rush this. If we pull it out prematurely, his little gnome hand is going to come out disfigured. So there we have our uh, cured little drip. So we know that we're ready to open our mold. And now we're ready to check our work. And you'll notice here, because we have that one seam, that minimizes how much cleanup work we have to do on our finished gnome. And even in that seam area, if everything's seated together properly, we get a very minimal seam that's easy to clean up using an X-Acto knife or scalpel. So there we have our finished cast resin gnome, faithfully reproduced just like the original. And we have a reusable silicone mold that can produce uh, probably at least two or three dozen more little resin gnomes. And because we didn't use any mold release, these little guys are ready to be primed and painted. And this particular formula of resin is very easy to paint and prime. I typically use Rust-Oleum primer to prepare these guys for painting and then use either acrylic or oil paints over the top of that. So those guys are going to tiptoe off into the sunset. And now you know how to use our silicone molding kit, which of course is available on our website at brickintheyard.com. I'll put a link in the video description, and of course all of the supplies used on our channel are available on our web store. So be sure to check us out online at brickintheyard.com, and I'll also put a link in the video description to our video library that I mentioned earlier. Really good core knowledge that you need about basic molding and casting instructions. And last but not least, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and, of course, like this video and click the little bell icon so you're notified when we put out new content.